Hello, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is Monday, December 6, 2021. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia, which is in the US on the East Coast. And today I have to share some knitting in progress, some finished knitting, some embroidery that is finished, some finished weaving, and a few other little miscellaneous things. So let's go ahead and get started. I have been working on some socks this year for Christmas. I have a lot of Christmas sock yarn that I have never gotten to. And so I wanted to get some of that knit to go along with some other Christmas socks that I'd already knit. So the first pair is right here. And this is a a yarn from a craft house magic it was called jingle something it's been so long since i made them i can't quite remember but it was it, it was a christmas colorway and i'm not sure she still carries this or not i used a contrast heel i mean a cuff and toe i did a heel flap with a slip stitch heel flap and a gusset and these are um probably for me, but I'm trying to decide between which, which pair to keep. Right now I'm thinking I will keep that pair for myself. The next pair comes from, the yarn comes from Circus Yarn. Um, I'll put it across here because I'm probably not saying the name of their company right. I have made a pair of socks like this before. But when you purchase this yarn, it's intended to, to make this gradual change from green and white stripes to red and white stripes. And the first time I purchased it, I purchased the small set. They, it comes in two pre-wound balls so that you can start at the same place. You could do two at a time or one at a time, but it's the yarn will start at the same place so you can make a matched pair of socks. But when I did the small one, I made the mistake of starting and doing cuff down and I probably made the leg part too long. So I was going to run out of yarn and so I ended up having to cut short and I really had almost no yarn left. And I had gave them to my daughter who has a shorter foot than do I. So I decided to buy the medium one and I decided to do toe up, which I don't normally do mainly because I always have to look up how to do the cast on. So rather than looking it up, um, I just do top down because it's very familiar to me. But I wanted to do that so that I for sure would not have to make them too short in the foot because even if the leg was shorter, that's that's okay with me. I don't really usually even ever make a cuff uh, leg this tall. But I had to because then the green went so far that it's like I wasn't even going to use any red. So I ended up putting uh, the red at for the heel. So I had to do an afterthought heel. I wasn't, I just, I, I probably could have done a heel flap and gusset as it turned out, but I didn't. <laughs> um, so I'm happy with these, but I wish the color change had happened here. And maybe if I'd done the heel flap, it would have, or if I'd come in a little bit, but you just don't know that when you're starting off with yarn and yet, unless you've done that same yarn before. So, and of course I had done the same color before, but this, so this pair of socks is finished. And I have a third one and this one, I'm pretty sure I had the, the ball. You know, I do this all the time. I save these little, paper that goes around the yarn. I can't think of the name right now. And then I can't find it right now. This is from Turtle Pearl, I think is the name of the company. If it's not, I'm going to put it across the bottom. This is one of their Christmas colorways. I forget what it's called. And I did do something a little bit odd here because I did not have a contrast. I probably should have just taken uh, white. I, I had somebody. I want to wind it up. So when you're doing the rib you want to not do your rib pattern your knit to purl to on a color change row 
round when you're going around and the color is changing you want to just knit that so you don't th get those little color blips and therefore because the colors change so many times I feel like this might not be as stretchy as it would have been and I was just trying to keep the blips out the other thing I did and I can't remember exactly how but I right after the red I cut the yarn and where I, or I did to here and then I cut some other yarn so that I could continue with green I wanted there to be a green stripe here. It's not the right pattern, but it's close. So there should be a white in here and it's right here. But I did that so that it looked more, like it wasn't gonna be red on red. And that's what I thought was gonna happen. So it wasted a little bit of yarn on, on both socks. So I had to do the same thing on both socks. And I did do the exact same number of rounds. And I did cut the yarn exactly in the right place because I even took a picture of it. But in the end, this toe finished faster. It just must have been my gauge that was going on because I counted every round and put you know a little light bulb marker so that I could count the rounds and do exactly the same, stop in exactly the same place. But that's okay, it's not that big a deal. Although it does bother me. But I can't decide if this pair is gonna be my gift pair or the first pair. So I have three finished pairs of Christmas socks to go along with, I believe I have four already. But then I had another skein and once I finished the other knitting that I needed to get done, I finished when I wanted to, which was um, to have December free. I did start another pair. Now this pair is just begun. And what I'm gonna try, what I'm trying to do, I figured it out how much to do each day so that I could finish the pair by Christmas Eve. And I figured out that was 15 rounds a day. So today's December 6th and I just started the heel flap here. I decided to pick it up. This has um, seven stripes, this multicolored one, then pink, then red, mint green, and then three colors of brown. And then it starts over. So I decided as soon as I got to the red, that then my heel flap would be part of the red and green, and then maybe the gusset would be taken up with the brown, and then it would keep going. So I'm, I'm, I'm not cutting the yarn or doing anything else. This yarn is from Freckled Whimsy, and it's called Peppermint Mocha. And it is on that, if you're doing the fingering weight yarn, this is the what I call the thinner one. And so I'm using a size one needle, which I usually do for both kinds of yarn. It's a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And here's the ball. So peppermint mocha, this is your mo mocha, and these are mints, I guess, peppermint and maybe wintergreen or something. So I think I'm gonna like these quite a bit, and I hope that I actually figured it out right. I'm pretty sure I can have them done by Christmas Eve, even if I have to stop and just work on them. So my other knitting project that I was working really hard on, you may have seen it on, if you follow me on Instagram, I have been posting an advent calendar from Arnie and Carlos, and it's called Mini Nordic Sweaters Advent. And I saw them talk about it on a little video in sometime in October, and I thought, I want to do that. So I went and ordered the pattern, ordered the yarn that they suggested. It's their brand of a Nordic yarn, and it's from Rowan. And this is a skein of the green. But I ordered it, and I was excited to get started. So I thought, well, I'll just make a sample one just to see how the pattern works out, and this will just be, you know, an extra or what, what have you. So this is the one that I did that with right here. And the way that pattern goes is there's a number on both sides, from one through 24. The top part of the turtleneck is open, and this is where you'll put your little surprises for Advent. The end of both sleeves is closed, and Arnie and Carlos do give a, a tutorial to show you how they do it. I actually use Judy's Magic Cast On, like you would do to start a toe up sock or other projects like that. The bottom is also like that. So it's more like a little bag with sleeves. 
that holds the little treats. Now, I, I have seen people post these where they did not do this. You could just do a regular cast on and if you wanted it close, sew it together at the end or leave it open because somebody left it open and put it on a little stuffed animal, which was really cute. I wanted to do this and I'll tell you that you do three times Judy's Magic Cast On times 24 sweaters. Well, I did actually 25 because I did this one twice. I now know how to do that. So I can start to up socks all the time. I know I won't need the videos anymore for that because I did it so many times. It got really easy after like the third, third time, I think. Um, those sweaters work bottom up. You do the body, then you do two sleeves, and then you finish it off at the top. Some things that I did differently. One is the turtleneck itself folds down. I did make mine a little bit shorter because when I folded it down, I thought that looked just fine. And so I did do a few shorter rounds. Another thing that I started doing, and I'll have to only show you, I can only show you pictures because I've already given this advent calendar to my daughter to use for my grandson. I stopped doing the number on both sides and instead I have the full design on the other side, which I like because I think you see the whole pattern better um, on the back side and maybe you don't need to, you know, if the numbers are all up front, the back didn't have to have that. So that was just a personal choice that I made. But anyway, I made this first one and then my yarn still wasn't here. And I just, I first of all, I knew it was gonna take me a while. This took me two days. I don't knit all day, of course, but the time I have to knit, this took me two days and I thought I have to get going. So I went to my local yarn shop and I bought some Cascade 220 in a red and a green and I already had white or natural color. It was not this natural. This is Peyton's Croy or Patton's Croy. It knits up a little bit bigger. So when I did the second or, um, sweater, it came out smaller. So I had to go back and redo this one. And that's when I decided to put the full design on the back and not the number on the back. To keep them the same size, I used a, one of my blocking mats that hooked together to block big things, but I traced out, not this sweater, I traced out the second sweater, and then I used this to sit each one down to block them, and then I just used a whole lot of these little blocking pins to put it in place. You are directed to steam block it, but not the rib. So I would put a longer one across and so I wasn't getting the rib scrunched up here or here. And then I, um, before I started, I steamed it really well and then put it down on here because my gauge wasn't always the same depending on the yarn I was using. So sometimes I had to stretch a little bit more than other times. If you've watched my podcast for a long time, you'll know I'm not good at color work. I've had a lot more practice and I feel a lot more comfortable. I feel like my tension got better, but I'm not good at it. So there, there needs to be some blocking and sometimes they just come out a little smaller. That's just the way it is. But I, I would steam them really well and stretch them out. So they all looked, you know, pretty much the same size. And I'm gonna show you a picture here. Um, I gave it to my daughter. She hung it across her hutch with some twine and used little uh, clothespins. So she's got two rows, one through 12 and then 13 through 24. And she's filling them with, my grandson likes peppermint candy canes. I bought the little tiny ones that are packaged in plastic. They're called, they're from Bob's. Well, at least the ones I bought were from Bob's company. And so that goes down inside. And then we were putting a folded dollar bill down inside. So those were the two little prizes. And I wasn't gonna change those every day just because I knew they fit. And he has another advent calendar. And that had little Legos pieces in it. It was a Lego advent calendar, a Harry Potter Lego advent calendar for 2021. And my daughter just pulled out all the little pieces and put them in his advent. So he doesn't need a lot of candy. So he has a little toy. He has the dollar bill because he has a he loves mo mo getting money to put in this little bank he has. It's kind of cool. You slide the dollar bill in like a soda machine and it grabs it and puts it inside. It has a combination. Anyway, I feel like I'm talking too fast. 
So anyway, that just seemed like, I, I still wanted him to have one of those peppermint candies because he really likes them every year. So that project took me until November 30th at 10 p.m. to finish them all, and I was lucky to do it, to get it done, because I did have to take three days and pretty much plug away at it. I was finishing one a day then. So I, it, I don't know how much time, any time other people have, but, and if you're really fast at color work or something, or you're just a fast knitter, but one a day is, for me, was really hard one every two days, which I had it all planned out. I could get it done, but I actually wanted it done by before December 1st so that they could have have them. And I made that goal. So that was quite an accomplishment, I felt like. Arnie was saying on their podcast where they were talking about this, he can do two in one day if he has a lot of knitting time. And I thought, whoa, I'm a slower knitter than I thought I was. I, I did never thought I was a fast one, but I didn't think I was that slow, but I am. So anyway, for knitting, I believe that's it because I have spent much of this year, I think from April till October, working instead on these felt ornaments. 2018, I did a Vlogmas for 12 days where I, the, for the very first time, made this set of ornaments. They're from a company called Mmm Crafts, but it's M-M-M Crafts, is on Etsy. And she sells the patterns and you use wool felt to create these 12 days of Christmas ornaments. Now she has a couple of other sets as well. But those ornaments, I made that year. So if you want to see those, you can look back there. I gave those, ended, I was making them for myself, but I ended up giving them to my parents for Christmas that year. And then I was gonna make another set for myself and I never did it. So for some reason, I decided March or April, I'm going to make that set again. Well, I actually know what prompted it, but I'm gonna make that set again. So I decided, hey, how about I'm going to make two sets and do them at the same time. So do the first, the two pairs out of different colors, but two at a time and then be done. So I did make, do that. And then I just kind of got this, I don't know, be in my bonnet just to keep going. I kept thinking, oh, no, I want to do this, co these colors and these colors and these colors. And I found this glitter felt that really jazzed them up. So if you want to see those, if you go over and look on Instagram and just pull up my whole feed there, I would post them every every day till I do 12 and then I'd have another set and do 12. So you can see them all. I'll put some at the end of this and I might go get a box and just open and show you. I probably will, I have to stop and go get the box. I ended up making eight sets and each set takes me at least two weeks to make. So it was quite a project. Additionally, there are other ornaments in her series. She doesn't just have the 12 days of Christmas. She then added, twas the night before Christmas. And I did show you Mrs. Santa Claus that I made from that. And that's actually what started me. When I saw she had new patterns, I right away said, I'm gonna make those. So I think back in March, the last time I did a podcast, I showed you Mrs. Claus, but I'll show it. That's been a long time I know. I will show you her again. So here she is. This is wool felt. This particular felt I purchased from Benzi Designs, which is also on Etsy. You can see she's got a little beaded Christmas ball in her hand and a little package. The package is made from a different kind of felt, acrylic felt that's stiff that you can buy at a craft store. And these have a lot of sequins and beads on them. So this is Mrs. Claus, and then of course you have to have Mr. Claus. And here he is, and he's carrying a stocking with a candy cane, and he has a little jingle bell, and a cute little twinkle eye, and on the back is embroidered 2021. The way that these are made, the patterns are made. First, I will say the patterns are long. They're because they include every detail, take you step 
by step and just focusing on one step at a time, you can finish it. The beauty is, and there's also a lot of photographs to show you what she means. The beauty of these is that the patterns themselves are printed on this sulky stick and stitch. That's the wrong name, but I'll put it across here. You run that through your printer and then you lay, you peel it off, it's sticky and you put it on your felt and the embroidery lines are right there. So you know exactly where to take the needle in and out. So along with the great directions, that's what has you able me able to do it. And people maybe who, who have not done much embroidery, you need to be able to do a running stitch, a back stitch, and some French knots. And a lot of the places on the patterns that have French knots, I have now opted for, for beads. This pattern calls for beads, but some of them might would have a, a French knot there, and instead I'm now using beads most of the time. So then along with the, in this series so far, there are four patterns. There are also two little elves. And here's the little boy elf with his adorable pencil. She tells you exactly how to make that. That's a toothpick. And he has a little list in his hands and it says naughty or nice and little check marks. And you can print those off or you can make your own. That's included in the pattern. So it's got a little jingle bell up here, which isn't jingling, but that's, that's okay. Maybe the little thing came out of it. You use wooden beads and you use some cardstock. His ears are cardstock, wooden beads for his hands and his head. So there's the little boy elf, and then we have to have a little girl elf. Oh, and again, they, they have the date on the back also, and she, on the pattern, includes like 20 years worth of dates. So here she is with her little belled hat, and she's carrying a little letter to Santa Claus at the North Pole, and she has a little bag here with some more letters inside of it. You can see she's she's walking. So we've got little boy and little girl elves to help Santa and Mrs. Claus. So after making those four, then I saw that there was also another set she had started. So she adds to the sets and her goal I think was like another pattern for each series every year. So this next series was a Christmas Carol. And I started off with Ebenezer Scrooge. Here he is carrying a little candle. Aren't his slippers just so cute in his robe and it has the date. So he's of course got a Scroogey face. And then she had also made Marley, Mr. Marley. And I just love Mr. Marley. Look at his detail. Of course, he's a he's a ghost. And I have seen people post pictures of theirs where they made him in a gray outfit. I thought that's what I should have done. But I've already picked this color palette, so I'm sticking with it. I don't think it matters. They're just all lovely. So he's got little things on his chain. And I love his coat. Is that just so cute? And the date on the back and his his head there. So there is Mr. Marley with his cute little spectacles up there and his grumpy looking eyebrows and the way he looks like he's walking. I, all of these are just such amazing details added. Now there's a third pattern in this set and it was supposed to come out, I, I thought sometime in um, June because pic finished pictures were posted and she was working on the pattern. But unfortunately the designer who's probably pretty much a one man show had a lot of family emergencies and I believe her husband was in the hospital for quite a while. So she did not get that pattern done. It is done now, but it was not done when she had wanted it to be done and I kept waiting and waiting for it. And then when it did come out, actually was in Florida and couldn't get it then. And then I had these or these sweaters to get going on. So I have not started that yet. I do have, I purchased the pattern. I have the felt. So I'm going to be making, and she is the ghost of Christmas past. 
I don't think I put the pattern over here. I would show you. No, I didn't. Not now on her site. She also has other patterns available. And one is a snowbird, which is a pretty fast ornament to make. So I made one snowboard. I think I'm going to make sets of these like with coordinated colors, just change the colors around and do a sets of three. I think that would make a nice gift, but not this year. I do. This is called snowbird and, and I like this one a lot. Very sparkly and you can, you know, change little details on there to personalize it and your colors personalize it too. And another thing she has, which I think I will just run over here and pick it up and be right back. Another pattern that she has is to make a little needle book. And my sister actually, I got her started making these, so she ended up making six or seven sets as well for gifts. But she went and she made me one for my birthday. And it's actually downstairs with my embroidery stuff. But I made one myself after I saw that the one that she made for me. And I made this as a gift for a friend. And it's a needle book. And you can open it here and then inside put your embroidery needles or your sewing needles and it's all made out of felt as a little hanger there so this is another pattern and she has others but and and I have purchased one there's a cute little one you may make a little mouse or a bear in a little sleeping bag inside an Altoids tin and I love Altoids tins or any kind of a tin and so I have that pattern, but I have not made it yet. I'm going to make get that done though and put it in my grandson's Christmas stocking, which sounds a little strange. I know six-year-old boys don't usually care for things like that, but he likes those little boxes too and just likes little stuff that fits inside of stuff. So I think he'll still like it. And if not, that's fine too. So that's the embroidery that I've been doing. And I did do some weaving this year. Um, I think the last podcast in March, I was, I made some green and white dish towels. And then I'm got another set of three colors that are pinks and oranges. So there's a dark pink and orange and a light pink. And I made one nice big dish towel. Then I had, I actually had the, the, um, loom warped to make two more this size but then there was an issue with a broken thread so being very new at this and not really sure what to do and being rather frustrated and angry with myself i decided i would salvage this one so i just cut the threads and took this off and made this one and what i'm plan to do because there's still a lot of string on there is to the strings are just hanging i'm going to thread them back through the thingy that has the little holes in it the dent it's something to do with i don't know what it is and i won't get three out of it but i should be able to get another one this same size out of it but i am changing up the uh weft yarn uh thread so this was light pink and I'm going to change to either the orange or the dark pink for the web. So it'll look a little different, the same, but different. I had started off and made a smaller one. This, I, I warped the loom like this. And then I just decided I wanted a wider one. So I made this one that's, but it's just a single because I decided I wanted it wider. So that's what I've done on weaving. And I have some more cotton string and it's a blue uh, teal or aqua aqua colored and white that I want to make a set from and there's also a navy blue so there's three colors um, I'm not going to get to that till I finish the warp that's on there but that should be sometime maybe after the new year that I can get to right now I'm also working on another knitting project I said that was all my knitting but it's really not I'm working on another knitting project. It is a shawl, but it is a mystery shawl and it's a knit along. I purchased an advent calendar from Knitty McPurley, which is Devin Bentry, and her advent calendar came with 24 days little boxes. Isn't that cute? This is today's box I'm gonna open in a minute of yarn 
and a pattern. So she put the clues to the pattern, I think in three or four different envelopes. And so you work the first work through. So every day you open your new little box and get your yarn. So let's do that, or I'll do that. Ah, so this is what's being added today, this blue with some other colored, the lighting in here is not great for me or for you, but so I can't quite tell what that is right now. Maybe it's a dark blue. I don't know. I'll have to, I have to get in better light. And here is what I have so far. So I have days one through five yarn added to this. Let's get the front up front. Okay, I think, yes, there's the, I have a marker on the front. So started down here with day one's yarn and then we st added date. So I went to here and then on December 2nd, I opened up the box and this yarn was in it. So we striped and then continued. Then the third day, we've got some stripes, which are harder to see than the first set of stripes, but they are th right in there. And then this is day four, and this was day five. So let's hold this up here. So now we're going to this darker, a little more solid color there. So we'll just be doing that every day and then I don't know what's going to happen, you know, what's going to change or anything because there's separate envelopes for when you get to a certain point. So today I need to wind this up and I, what are these, 10 grams? So you're just knitting 10 grams a day. It isn't taking very long and I'm t so I've got the sock. I'm doing 15 rounds a day and this I'm doing the 10 grams a day and... We're saving, she provided this little bag. We're saving the extra yarn each day when you break the yarn your day before color off. You're saving it in here for something at the end. So we shall see what's going to happen at the end. I think that's all I've been working on. It's mostly been these ornaments, so let me go get one set and I'll bring out my one set of 12 Days of Christmas because I've got to mail them this afternoon and I'll share those with you. Hold on. I purchased these boxes that tie with a ribbon and have a little magnet in here because they, they fit um, right in here, all the ornaments. Um, on this set of ornaments, it's actually 15 ornaments when you're done if you do the whole set because the partridge and pear, there is a partridge and a pear. So you have two ornaments for day one. And on day six, I mean, the sixth day of Christmas, you have geese laying and there's an egg. But I decided when I was making all of these as gifts, I did not make the egg. And then the other one is when you do the Lord of Leaping. He has a heart next to him. So for most of the sets, I did not make the heart or the egg. Of course, I made the partridge and the pear. The other thing is when you listen to the Christmas Carol, 12 Days of Christmas, you hear it differently towards the end. Up till eight maids of milking, it's always the same. But some of the people at the end switch around depending on the version that you listen to. So she made her first set of ornaments in the version that she preferred. It's an older version. I think she says it's an older version. If you want to do the version you might be more familiar with, she sells for like $2 uh, pattern pieces that just where they have the number on the back, she gives you those new pattern pieces. So I started making, after making three sets, the first set back in 2018 and my first two sets this year, I went with the other numbering system that goes along with a book that um, I featured on that 2018 podcast or vlogmas, I guess it was. So anyway, that was Partridge and a Pear, Partridge and Pear. And on the back, they have the numbers and you could leave that off. I The very first set I made, I didn't do it because I didn't think I was gonna get done in time. So let me get the second one here. This is two turtle doves. This set is for my brother. I have two brothers. This is for the one that's two years younger than I. 
here is our day three. This is the front chin. See that I, when I found this glitter felt and then I started adding sequins and beads. This is where the pattern calls for French knots, which is great. The French knots are beautiful. But I just started liking the shine to them because of the Christmas ornament piece. This is our Collie Bird, as she calls it. C-O-L-L-Y means dark. So, but I know in our songs, we often say Calling Bird, either, either way. This is four. And I started using a metallic paint on my little, there's two, a uh, bead on eight, two of the birds. And five golden rings. This is not a gold ring, but it's blue. This is number five. And then I showed you the six geese a laying. Number six. And seven swans a swimming. The swan is always one of my favorite ones. So seven swans a swimming. And then we get to the people. Here's our eight maids of milking. And I did change something. The, the pattern has the, the belt as part of the apron, but I started making my own just as a little separate belt because I wanted it to be glittery. I, I love the sparkle. Then in this series, the way I numbered them, this is the optional is nine ladies dancing. She's another favorite of mine. And then I have it as 10 Lords of Leaping. Her original patterns, it's 12 Lords of Leaping. I just love him and his little jacket with the split tail. And 11 Pipers Piping. And I used metallic felt for the pipe. Not glitter felt, but metallic felt. The metallic felt's pretty easy to stitch through. The glitter felt is, for me, really tough. I had to take lots of days off due to holes in my fingers, especially right here. I've bought 20 different thimbles. I tell you, I've tried these stick-on things, everything. I cannot work with them. Um, so I would have to stop for a few days. My, he my fingers are finally healed. And here is finally the drummer drumming. So th this set will go to my brother and his family. Get everybody back in there. And I'm just gonna, I have two more boxes here. I'm not gonna go through them individually, but this set is for my brother who's younger. And it was when I actually, I think, oops, I did make the um, goose laying because I had already made this, I think. So I, this is a variety color pack. It's just, um, mix match bright and I thought he would like that that and then I made a set for my cousin and this set is a pink and green set I did a red and green set which I really like but I've already given that away I did a yellow and blue set that I've already given away and another bright set I've given away so I can't show you those but that's pretty much been my year instead of knitting I was in a pickle not knitting, but in a pickle embroidering because I just kept doing it and doing it and I couldn't stop. And so I did show you my, um, from Knitty McPurley, I showed you that yarn, but also treated myself to another advent calendar from Craft House Magic. And so I'm gonna open my day six and show you that. And at the end, I might be able to put a picture of the uh, days one through five from her. So here is today's, and it has a progress keeper with a little jingle bell. It, I'm going to turn. I'm going to take this off of here and put it on my shawl because that is perfect. I have a, I have a heart progress keeper just to keep me straight with the front and the back. I'm going to put that on there because this it's more seasonal. I guess that's all I have in the way of crafting. It doesn't seem like a lot for as many months as it has been. But I have, I assure you, I've kept very, very busy. I'm still working my one day a week, not even a full day usually, for processing mark records for library books in my county as part of my retired opportunity program, retirement opportunity program. This is my last year. I have about 22 hours left. So then I'm going to be all done with that. And my husband is now retired and home. 
And right now he's gone off on an errand, so I was able to do the podcast because I just cannot do it when somebody's here. And when he was home and working, that was okay because he was downstairs and he'd be busy doing whatever and he wouldn't bother me. But now he's retired for four months and we're both adjusting to that. Um, he's needing more, I've kind of gotten used to him being at home. So that's not been as, that was the pandemic kind of gave me a little bleed into the whole retirement thing. But he's not used to not having something to do and he's not a, a good person to not have work to do. So it's um, quite an adjustment for everybody, but it, it'll all work out fine. And we're fortunate to live in a time where we're, we can actually retire and try to enjoy the last part of our lives. So not to get maudlin, but I'm, I'm, I hope that I can get this thing loaded up. I'm dealing with a new iPad and I'm just, fingers crossed I can get it uploaded because even back in March with the other iPad, there were issues with uploading. So hopefully this gets uploaded and I you'll be able to uh, watch. And let me wish you a wonderful rest of the year and a wonderful new year. And if you celebrate Christmas, a happy Christmas and happy Hanukkahs, anything that you celebrate, I wish that you have family and friends to enjoy it with and enjoy your crafting. So bye. A Box of Socks, written by Amanda Brandon, illustrated by Catalina Echeverri. Granny Mutton has made a box full of socks for little Lionel's friends, but little Lionel gets all the socks mixed up and has to find out which pair goes where, an early reader book, level orange. I like this book because it is accessible to young children to read on their own. It's listed as a guided reading level H through J.